We were talking about this world that we're building in. Here you can see a grid at the center of that sphere of space that is our uh, uh, world to create. Uh, to create in that world, I can make polygons, I can create primitives, etc. and so forth. So to begin with, I'm just going to look at uh, a curve creation tool. And now what I'm doing is basically creating a curve in world space. And when we look at this particular uh, curve, you can see as I move the camera around that it is a curve in world space. It's obviously three-dimensional. Uh, moreover, if I hit the W key, I can thereby display the axes that I can translate this particular curve along. And notice that I have a red arrow, green arrow, blue arrow. Maya is color coded, so red, green, blue, X, Y, Z. R, G, B, X, Y, Z. Um, so red is always X, green is always Y, blue is always Z. Uh, this uh, these three axes to allow me to move the curve in tells me that I have a curve in world space. Next, I can right mouse button on that curve and elect to place a curve point. Notice that the curve point basically is placed along that curve. Pretty much uh, no matter where I move that uh, uh, cursor, um, it, the, uh, the little dot is always constrained to that curve. So no matter where I move the, the, the cursor in world space, the dot, the curve point, is constrained to the curve. That actually is entering, actually is, is uh, being placed at a particular value of u, the dimension u, along that curve. And in the lower right corner, I can actually see uh, that particular dimension. So now it tells me that I have a curve at the value of u of 2.158. So that's a second dimension. Let's just now go to object mode, select that uh, curve, and delete it. As I mentioned, I could uh, place a sphere by using the primitive tool. And once again, if I hit the W key on that, you notice that I can move that sphere in world space. That surface also has a space. That can be indicated by um, a number of ways. Um, I can actually draw in that space. So let's bring that uh, uh, sphere into a special state. Let's say modify, make live. And what that's going to do is change that uh, sphere to be ready to accept a curve being drawn in its surface as opposed to in the world. Now, when I use that particular curve, that uh, creation tool, I can click. And the points to define the curve are constrained to the surface of that particular curve, that, that sphere. So now the, that sphere curve is in the surface space of that sphere, a different space altogether than the world space we just looked at. Now with that, the surface still selected, I can say modify make not live. Now I can select that curve once again. Just a curve, and notice that it is stuck in the space of the surface. So now when I hit the W key, now I only have two dimensions to move it in, U and V, the U and V of the surface. If I were able to move it at all in W, it would be off the surface and therefore outside of surface space. And surface space is in fact where this, uh, this curve is constrained. So as I move it, notice I can move it all over the place, but it's stuck to the surface. What that will allow me to do now is to uh, take that particular curve and <clears throat> uh, use a tool where I can edit curves, duplicate surface curves. Now what I've done is I've just made a copy of that surface space curve, but in world space. At first, it looks like nothing happened, and that's because the world space curve is exactly on top of the surface space curve. So now when I hit the W key, now notice I have three axes to move that in because although it looks like the same curve in surface space, it's now in world space. It's in a different space. So when I hit the, uh, the R key here, for instance, I can scale it up, and now you can see that I have my original curve still there, and the world space version of it scaled up. Now with those two curves selected, I can loft between them. 
And what I've done is I've created a surface that ends precisely on that sphere's surface. It's a tool that you're going to be using multiple times, jumping back and forth from surface to world to curved space to build objects. I'd use this kind of technique, for instance, to have the spout of a teapot end precisely on the surface of the teapot body and not interpenetrate, not squash, not smash through it at all. Uh, having surfaces smashing through one another is a unprofessional method of modeling because it shows a lack of care, a lack of craftsmanship, and it also will cause render problems later.